Today, we're talking about overexposure, blown out highlights across different cameras, the Arri Alexa, the FX6, the FX3, and the A7 IV. And the first clip that we're going to start with is that of this Alexa. It's a log image. I'm just going to choose this frame here where we get this in the shot. Now, if I bring up the scopes, you can see where we're at in terms of just the graph. We need to stretch this image to make sure that it fills everything. The first way to go about this is to do a 709 transform. Grab a custom LUT adjustment and just put that there. Now I go into that custom LUT and I transform from log C to rec 709. This is the image that we're working with in rec 709. And personally, it's not necessarily a bad image. It's just that all the information here is gone. It's blown out. How do we bring this back? Now, if we come back here, if we look at the scopes, we see that majority of this image is pushed from 50 and above. There's not a lot of like shadow information there. Um, so now I'm going to clip on that. I'm going to click on the clip itself and then I will bring in a curve. I specifically love using the curve. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is to just bring this down. I'm going to go into this, get that point and just click down. And what I'm looking at is the curve and how that is affecting the contrast. Now, I know that this is her skin. That skin is probably around here. I want this to sit around anywhere from 50 to about 55. So I would just drag that and take that about there. So I'm comfortable with the skin there, right? Just with that one adjustment, we've gone from this to this, this to this. The main reason why we're here is specifically for these highlights. Now, what I'm going to do is to then come up here and start to drag this down. Now, as I do that, you start to see what is going on on the outside. For example, you start to see this area here. You can start seeing the trees. So we've gone from this to this. We've gone from this to this. We get a sense of information of what is out there. Um, I think I can literally still even bring down some things in that shadow side of, of this image, probably here, like so. Um, maybe just bring down her skin just a little bit more so we're not too bright. They're about there and just another curve here just to compress that just a little bit more, like so. Maybe just add a little bit of like you know, saturation. And I usually just do that with the with the wheels just to, you know, bring in some life there. Just somewhere about there is fine. OK, it's not a lot, just a tiny bit, maybe just a little bit. That's actually a little bit too much, just like so. Um, and there. So now we've gone from this blown out overexposed image and now we're here, something that is more passable um, for this image. And now if we go to the FX6 as well, um, this is a clip that I believe the level of overexposure on this shot, especially in the highlights. Um, I'm just going to take this frame here to begin with. I will do the same process. My process is usually just, you know, go in do the conversion, bring that in for the FX six one. I'm actually going to do it differently. What I will do is instead of using a custom LUT, I'm going to use the Hanser's transform to be able to do this. I'm only using the Hanser for my 709 transform. That's what we want to do here. So I come in here, I grab the camera and the vendor is the Sony. We shot this on the FX six. Um, and this was in, yep, I believe 800 S log three S gamma three, 800. Um, and I'm just going to turn everything else off and just straight away. Like you can literally see there's nothing here anymore. This whole sky is gone. And the good thing about the answer is now if I use the false color, right? If I just put a clipping indicator, you can literally see the shadow sides somewhere here, the clipping. And if I bring up the scopes, you can see that here. 
you can see that here so this blue is literally it means the shadow part of this image is clipping and now if you look at this look at this false color that is gone literally it's it's gone there's nothing there it's it's all milky way um and you can see the clouds as well they're probably around the 95s so how best can we bring this back look at the distribution of this image everything is here this is all the i mean this is the sky it's gone this is the buildings and yada 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 and our talent is somewhere somewhere here right he's somewhere here this is the lamp if i if, you know if i'm correct i will bring that down Right. And as soon as we do that, you start to see some information come back. Like you have to be careful not to overdo this. Right. Especially for images like this, where you want to see the character's face, but at the same time, you do not want to um, keep him in the dark. So I think somewhere about there is OK, but those highlights are still extremely blown out. So what I will do now is bring down the side where you can see what hits it, what this is doing. Um, what I'm looking out for here is see. So by me lifting that side, I begin to bring some sort of clarity back to his face. Right. Um, and then what I want to do now is attack the highlights. So I've come here, pick a point just like on that edge of the curve. And then I come down. And look at that now. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Um, so I think if, yeah, probably here as well. Um, just keep those shadows like so somewhere there. Or maybe we'll just ballpark this here and then see how I can work this into the shot. Right. So, yeah, I would say somewhere about here is comfortable. Um, and now if we go back into the answer, let's work with the, the false color. See, yes, we're still gone here, but this is more acceptable as opposed to this place that was extremely blown out the other time. And we see that his skin tone, um, especially the side where is facing the light, um, was safe in the spot anywhere from 55 to 60 considering he's of Asian descent. This is what we have on this image, right? Um, which is a more acceptable place to be in terms of the overall quality of this. This is where we started from. This is where we are started from. We are, you can see just, I mean, watch everything that's going on here. Now you can see the outline of the structure and everything else. Um, before it was gone, it was gone. And you can start to see some of the colors in in the sky as well, which is great. Um, so that's about that for the FX six, just bringing back the highlights um, and just tackling general overexposure of things. All right, so let's go now to the FX three shot. This was a commercial that we shot a while back and just looking at the log image here, I can already tell that there is you know, there's an incredible amount of overexposure going on, especially on the skin tone. You can literally see her skin is in the high 70s. For someone like her, her skin tone should be around 50 to 55 or maybe 60 at most. Um, and then when I do a transform to 709, we can also still see that here, right? Uh, the, the dark side of the face is pretty dark compared to this part of her face. Now, this is pretty easy to do. Um, once again, I just go in and grab that midpoint. I like to start from the middle because it gives a great point. Now I'm going to stretch this image to the point where I can regain all the information on the bright part of the image. Now, this is where the this is where the beauty comes in. Now I will take the dark and the underexposed part and bring that back up and watch as I do that, you start to see that information just come back. You start to see that information come back. Now you do have to be careful with this. Um, I would say, um, don't over push it 
do not over push it maybe put that up back there and then i can compensate for that by bringing that um up here like so um you know somewhere around there and if you know if we look at where we started from as opposed to where we currently ended up so we have this to this and i think this is a much more acceptable exposure compared to where we were before yes we do have quite a huge contrast and then lastly i will go to this shot here of the sony a7 IV. the same principle applies do a conversion what i'm looking at specifically is this highlights now technically i could leave this image here I could leave this image here. It's nothing is really being blown out. I'm just looking at this, the car sit, um, they're a bit dark. Okay. So if we go in again, once again, just put a, put a point in that mid-tone because I think we're good on the mid-tone areas, right? We're, we're good there. I'll come down here to about anywhere from, I'm, I'm looking at the scopes and I'm trying to figure out this is anywhere from three to about 10. And I will try to replicate that here. Now what I will do is bring that up, right? What I'm looking for is I want to start to see information here. Um, so maybe not there per se, maybe here, move that, ooh, move that up. My, my, my slide just, just went up a little bit too drastically there, right? Right, about there, about there. Save that information, right? Let's say we do that. Um, and as you can, just look at the waveform, right? You see how it's been stretched and it's it's still trying to hold as much information as possible. Um, so just bring that up just a little bit um, and then take the mid tones and bring that down and you can instantly see what's going on in the trees here, in the trees here. Look at what is going on. See, they start to get more life. Um, and then I'll probably just take some of that highlights as well and just tone it down just a little bit, just a, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, right? So, and now we're here. What we can see, you can see the texture of the car seat. You can see the texture of the, the cabin. You can see everything. And the highlights are not, overexposed. It was quite a cloudy day. So um, there's not a lot of information to be retained in that sky. But overall, if we turn this off and we bring it back on, turn off on. If you look at the texture around here, right, we have off on off on the greens are richer, the colors are richer and you can see more in the shadow side. I personally recommend using curves to be able to do this. If you're interested in upgrading the type of music you use for your YouTube, there's a link in the description of this video. Click that and it will take you straight to where I get my music from. And with that being said, subscribe, peace, love, bye.